Hey guys, and welcome back. So I know you're probably all wondering, how did this arbitration go last week with SJM's father and the bigwigs and the lawyers over at SBS? Because remember, SJM's father was extremely upset with how SBS had represented how the fateful night went with his son. And because we don't have a final report from the police. We only have the mid-investigation police report. We have this strange situation right now where it seems like the police is trying to kind of go under the radar right now and hope the public sort of loses interest in this case and then probably then plop out the final report. That's essentially going to say the same thing as the mid-investigation police report because they verbally said as much. The thing in the public's mind right now as the sort of final word, the final public record, is essentially this show, this documentary, this so-called 80-minute television show, which is in a shortened 30-minute version on YouTube that you could see on the SBS site, and you can also download as a VOD on the SBS site, but it's full of inconsistencies and according to SJM's father, essentially, and even just to the objective observer if you compare it to even the really slanted police report, full of lies. Full of lies. And this is what SJM's father is trying to get the broadcast station to fix on their own. So he has made this request for the broadcast station to please fix these errors so that the public does not have a faulty representation of what's going on. And please be open and honest about what you did wrong and what you did fix. And it seems like SBS doesn't, you know, kind of really want to do that because they said as much in the arbitration. And if they don't want to do it, essentially you can sue SBS. But before you get to that level, there is an opportunity to avoid court, avoid all of that drama, avoid the expense and avoid the, mainly the time that it really sucks out of your life by going to arbitration, which is essentially a way to have a third party. And in this case, sometimes there is a government agency that specializes in your kind of dispute. And if there's a government agency that specializes in your kind of case, and that's all the better, sometimes I guess there's a way to do it on a private level. But in this case, there was a government agency that focuses on media-related matters, and they held the hearing last week. Now, of course, SBS has hired some real traditional lawyers, and they try to do what lawyers do all the time to spin everything on a dirty level in their favor. And usually it has to do with scheduling scheduling and spinning things so that it turns the perception in their favor. So usually it's done this way. The night before you meet, they launch all their documents. So it's kind of like somebody who turns in their homework at the last minute. Why? Because you put everything at the last minute and the people who are supposed to... in the, they're used to judges. So in that case, like the judges have to like read through everything. Then what's going to be fresh on the judge's mind? Whose viewpoint is going to be the freshest on their mind when you meet the next day? The SBS side, the side that plays this game. And then when the people who are trying to try to get justice 
Suddenly, they are presented with this new information that they're trying to process, and they're seeing all of these lies, they're seeing all of this manipulation, and they're all upset, and suddenly they're on the defensive. Why? Because their focus is now on trying to figure out what their opponent is saying and how to attack their opponent, and they forget about all the great arguments, all the great weaponry that they had prepared, and that's the strategy. So... That is how the other side makes you forget your weapons. So let's say like you have your strengths, you have the best weaponry and the things that you've practiced with, you know, if it's like the Hunger Games or whatnot, right? And so this is a way for the other side to get you to drop your best weapons and then focus on like, oh my God, what are they doing? What are they doing? What are they doing? And so that's the tactic. So they were, they had to respond to SBS, but this is not exactly court. So it's a little bit different. And in this way, it does in some ways favor SJM's father's side, but only up to a limit because basically SJM's dad has outlined what he would like. And we'll get into that. And if SBS disagrees, it's kind of like one and done. They disagree, then SJM's father has to sue. So it's basically not going to be like kind of like a back and forth kind of a thing. However, SBS looks like they're going to play the game of like, oh, well, we have to really go back to our headquarters and we have basically the lawyer and then the SBS representative, the chief producer who came, they're like, oh, we have no authority to say anything, make any decisions right here and there. It's going to take a long, 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 long time for us to figure out how to respond to this. So they're going to probably try to drag this one out as long as possible. So that's their tactic because the longer they drag it out the longer that they don't have to do a thing which is essentially the same thing as winning in their case so this is essentially now let's go into the points that sjm's father really wanted to fix and let's give some of the you know the outline some of the reasons that sbs gave all of this information comes from SJM's father's blog. Okay, so overall, SJM's father said there are four main problems with the program that SBS had released with unanswered questions, you know, hot daddy show. So first, they deliberately put forth a claim that SJM was a habitual drunk they later removed that claim, but the broadcast did not make any note of it. Instead, it was a small announcement on the website. So that original broadcast that went out to millions of viewers still has people who watch that think that SJM was a habitual drunk that wanders around when he gets drunk. Instead, the truth is when SJM gets drunk, he falls down and sleeps and does not move whatsoever. That was not corrected even in like kind of like as a subtitle or anything in the internet rebroadcast. Second, there were five additional mistakes, mistakes or really just like, you know, lies that were fixed on the program that were not announced to the public whatsoever. So again, the millions of people who saw the original TV broadcast still have the lie in their mind and they're still thinking all of the negative connotations with that original broadcast. Third, there are eight major misrepresentations in the broadcast that really deviate from fact and really just go in the realm of fiction. And fourth, SJM's father says that there are 14 major instances of one-sided biased journalism. Now, before we get into the eight major representations of the broadcast that really was just fictional that SJM's father outlines in his blog, let's go over some of the reasons that SBS thinks that they're totally innocent. First, they said, 
we did not produce this program with the intent to advantage a particular side. Of course, we expect the complainant sees that this broadcast was insufficient and did not properly convey the intent of the production. However, we do not believe the accusations of SJM's father. We don't see where the broadcast has violated any laws. In particular, an 80-minute program differs from straight reporting, especially when it comes to taking narrative liberties like reenactments, which are things everyone just has to accept. It's going to take some considerable time to see whether the claims made by the claimant are appropriate. So, as somebody who has worked in the news business, let me just tell you that this... Yeah, I'm sweating because of this. This is such BS because, again, this did not come out of the SBS drama department, even though Hot Daddy... The host of the show has been in many a TV drama. This show in particular is not a dramatic production. It is supposed to be current affairs. And Straight News does even better facts, fact checking and it has to be turned around within hours. And it has to be held to a higher journalistic standard in a compressed amount of time. These people had weeks. These people have 80 minutes to go over this. I'm sorry. You do not get to get away with saying that you have to accept the fact that you can fudge around with the truth because it's a longer piece. If anything, you have more time, longer piece, bigger budget, larger production values. It has to be even higher of a standard. For example, even 60 Minutes, that's a weekly show. You think the 60 Minutes producers are going to say, oh, you know, our show actually, our show has to, you just have to understand that our dramatic reenactments cannot be as accurate as the local news in Boise, Idaho, that those local reporters in their 90-second packages have to turn around in three hours. What kind of sense is that? What kind of sense is that? Sorry, boys, Idaho, I didn't mean that, but basically, you know what I mean. So if this is going to take a long time for SPS to figure out whether if it's appropriate to respond, then SJM's father, let me give you some advice. Why don't you create a reenactment, a documentary? Instead of 80 minutes, why don't you create a 90 minute? documentary why don't you recreate what you think happened between the hours of let's say 2 a.m to 6 a.m why don't you create a documentary and if anybody has a problem with how you interpret the facts and you interpret your reenactment maybe they can take you to the arbitration panel how about that Okay, if you don't believe how shady this was, let's go over some of the facts because S. James' father did a very good job outlining how shady this 80-minute show turned into such fiction that they should have just lumped it over to the drama department instead of current affairs. So first, SBS filmed an actress pretending to be Mr. A's mother, calling SJM's family at 528 from the park, making it look like she had been running around the park looking for SJM and then calling the family at an appropriate time and saying, please come look for your son. When in fact, the mom was still chilling in her car. She remembers she had driven the family to the park, the father and the son, hopped out at 5 12 a.m she was still in the car she hadn't even started looking for sjm or wandering around the park she was still in the car and that's when she called at 5 28 but in the reenactment it made it look like she had already gone around and even it said like in the narrative she had already gone around looking for SJM and then she decided to call the SJM family to be 
Oh my God, you should go look for your son. Second, we've talked about this before, but the bunny tunnel reenactment at 4.32 a.m. when Mr. A is going back home in the reenactment, he is looking pissed drunk, just like wandering like this and that. And even when we saw the CCTV footage of the actual SBS team filming the reenactment, you saw the directors telling the actor, no, 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 do it again. You gotta go like this. You gotta like look really drunk. And he, the actor had to do it multiple times to look even more drunk, more drunk, more drunk, when we already know from the actual CCTV footage, the guy did not look that drunk. In reality, he even did like a hop, step, and a skip, like to avoid the CCTV camera towards the end, remember? So that was done according to SJM's father to support and give foundation to the false narrative that Mr. A was blackout drunk when, in fact, it looks like he probably wasn't. Third, SBS lied when they did the reenactment when at 3.37 a.m. They showed in the reenactment that Mr. A was on the picnic mat next to SJM on the phone calling his parents, Mr. A was calling his parents going like, oh, my friend can't wake up, he's not waking up, when in fact, that was a lie. It was not stated that way in the police report and in the picture. Remember, we have a picture from 3.37 a.m. There was no SJM to be found. Also, in witness statements, there were some witness statements saying that there was no SJM. In another witness statement, it said that SJM was just sitting conflicting and in an another picture that we saw at 2 18 a.m the picnic area had already been cleared they had packed up mr a had put on his backpack he was like ready to go as if he was about to ditch sjm who was just slumped over remember the keeled over picture at 2 18 a.m so it looked like on the reenactment that everything had just still been laid out. You know, the picnic was still ongoing and he was just trying to wake up his friend. When in fact, already at 2.18, Mr. A was already like almost trying to peace out of there. So totally inconsistent, creating a whole fiction. And this, the fact that they already had sources from the police report shows that this lacks complete journalistic integrity. Fourth, SBS lied when they said that the parents of Mr. A had done one loop around the park to search for SJM before they called SJM's parents at 5.28 a.m. and they showed the video of the parents at the park CCTV footage has confirmed that that was not the case. That footage was actually from 5.38 a.m. Remember at 5.28 a.m., Mama was still in the parking lot. And remember in my visit to the park, I parked in that same parking lot. It took me forever to walk all the way to that area where they were filmed. And it took me forever to walk all the way to the picnic area. So there was no way for that to even be truthful. So there was no truth to the fact that they had taken a loop around to already search. What had actually happened was that at 5.12 a.m., the mother had driven the car, the father and the son hopped out, and they immediately headed for the river bank, and they, they were spending their time there, and they were trying to get some sort of search done on the river bank to get the all clear there. And then at 5.38 a.m., that is where that video came from. Fifth, SBS lied when it showed that Mr. A's family left their apartment in the elevator at 5.05 a.m. They actually went into that elevator at 5.02 a.m. and they were seen driving out of the parking lot 
of their building at 5.04 a.m. Now, why do these few minutes matter? Because nobody believes, nobody believes that Mr. A walked into his house, essentially like his front door at 4.52, like basically he got into the elevator of his building at 4.50, walked into his house at 4.52, and then by 5.02, like 10 minutes later, his whole family was dressed and ready to go out the door to go search for SJM. Because the story is, is that like he walked in, he was like blackout drunk, right? So how are you... How, have you ever talked to somebody who was blackout drunk? They don't give you straight answers. You know, he, he fell into bed, apparently took off his clothes and the mom like had to search through his clothes and was just like, oh, this is weird. Why do you have somebody else's phone? And like, what? You you, you couldn't find your friend? Like it, it was kind of like one, it's supposed to be like a confused uh, conversation. So most people are thinking like, that is probably not what happened. It probably looked like this was an operation that was already in motion and you basically just got in there. They were already ready to go. They were like, boom, boom, let's go out the door. They were already ready. They knew what was going on and they were ready to execute a plan. That is the suspicion that SJM's father has and many observers. And so the suspicion that SGM's father has is that SBS was con colluding with this whole case by giving the family an extra five minutes to make it look like they had done all of this in 15 minutes, which makes it a little bit more plausible that, okay, well, maybe in 15 minutes all of this can happen. But the fact that they had to fudge that makes it look, makes it look a little bit guilty, I think, on their part. That small difference is so small but yet so big you know what i mean six sbs lied when it said mr a's family arrived at the park and searched only for 10 minutes before then calling sjm's family so they said like oh they called around 522 when they actually said like oh they called at 528 so that wasn't even consistent they tried to make it sound like oh they only searched for like 10 minutes and then they called right away when in fact that was not the case at all remember the father and the son got dropped off they went straight to the riverbank to do whatever they wanted to do over there and the father was there at the riverbank until 5 34 a.m. Mr. A was there until 5 30 a.m. So that was quite a bit of time that they were there trying to do whatever they were trying to do. And then the mother didn't even get to the park area until like 5 30 a.m. So this does not add up. It's trying to make a fiction out of this entire timeline. Seventh, SBS lied again when it said that the two families met the same night on the 25th. So essentially the, the, the day when the family went to the park to go look for SJM, they said that they met the same day. And then the way that they did the narration was like, oh, even though it was so arduous, the Mr. A's family like went and they were up early and tried to help out. They still went and met with SJM's family, like as if they're the heroes. They're the ones like, you know, exerting all this effort. But they, for one, did not meet that same day. It was the next day after they had thrown away Mr. A's shoes and shirt. And suddenly it became about Mr. A and his family when this show should be again about SJM and looking for him and about the struggles and the sadness about SJM's family since when did it become about Mr. A and his family <laughs> you know that makes it a little suspicious and eighth this is very suspicious SBS lied again when it showed the reenactment at 4.27 a.m. when supposedly Mr. A woke up and realized his friend wasn't there. It showed Mr. A in the reenactment on the grassy knoll on the picnic mat 
and he woke up. That was not true at all. According to the witness statement, the passerby who supposedly woke up Mr. A, he was down by the riverbank, remember, with his backpack already on, and he was just kind of like passed out on the riverbank at 4.27 a.m. And so he was already kind of packed and ready to go. There was not that situation where he was just like sleeping on the picnic mat and suddenly, oh, maybe SJM was sleeping next to him and then maybe SJM wandered off the way that they were trying to make it look. Not at all. In fact, remember, now this is related to the next video. So this is essentially linked to be continued because there has been some new extremely scary shady video that has come out about like perhaps something else was going on around 2.18. But when you really look at it, at 2.18 a.m., he was already packed and ready to go. The, the picnic area looked like it was already clean and cleared and it was just SJM just kind of passed out on the, the lawn. So what's up with that? So that makes it extremely suspicious that they were trying to make it look like the picnic was already that was still active like it was still an active picnic situation at 4 37 a.m when that was not the case at all it was probably just empty so that was also a lie and a misrepresentation and remember 427 wasn't even the first claim remember it was 420 and they had to revise it because originally it was like oh at 420 that's when he woke up and then they were like oh no no i woke up at 427 and that or like the witness said oh no no maybe i found him at 420 or maybe i found him at 427 and even the sbs reenactment messed it up because they said Oh, if he woke up at 4.20, then he probably went through the bunny tunnel at 4.25, and that was even wrong. And just as an added bonus, another YouTuber has said that it's very highly suspicious that you remember the Shady Fisherman? They actually got paid 128,000 won from the police. At least that much has been shown on some sort of financial records and apparently that's according to the Andong Daily. They were saying like, it's a little bit strange that they would be compensated from the police. Usually that is not the case. This YouTuber was saying that maybe if you do go to the court, there is more of uh, instances of being compensated for things like that, but not necessarily from the police and that perhaps some of these guys actually were also in like a group chat that uh, per perhaps could be also related to Mr. A. Of course, that should be probably verified, but it seems as if there could be some linkages. And if you can press a little bit further, follow the money trail a little bit more, we may be able to see a little bit more links that could show something else. All right, guys, so I want to go over something else that's popping up right now about the whole 218 situation uh, in the next video. So stay tuned. And so we'll see you again next time. Bye-bye, guys. Tune in next time. Don't forget to subscribe. Find us on YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Love you.